Hello, this video is about collimating a Newtonian reflector telescope and my technique is, is actually doing it in the field. And we're going to start out with a basic eyeball collimation indoors and then a fine tune outside. And I'll also talk about some of the common tools that people use and um, why I don't use them. Thank you very much. Enjoy the video. You see in there, there's a donut on the primary and the three secondary adjustment knobs. On the back here, you'll see the primary collimation knobs and the primary locks. We're going to take a look in the focuser. You can see the uh, donut, this is well collimated. You're going to want to first back these three out maybe a quarter of a turn reach in without touching the mirror and adjust it until that center circle has absolutely no black along the edges if there's like an uneven amount of dark edge on one side or corner that means it's not exactly 45 degrees and then you'll tighten them down when you get that straight Loosen up your lock knobs. Then look back through the focuser. And center up your donut. Simple as that. Don't get overly technical with this, folks. It's, it's really simple. Just get it uh, as close to a line as you possibly can. And then tighten it back up. And leave it at that. Now you're ready to get it outside and, and uh, really finely collimate it. Don't go out and spend money on some kind of a center dot kit. Just go into your dollar store and find you some notebook hole protectors. If you feel like you need assistance finding the dead center of it, then uh, just use your focuser plug, poke a hole in it. You just need a real small hole and dead center and uh, that'll work. So now that you've got it eyeballed pretty close to the collimation, you need to get it out in the field and with your eyepiece or your camera in live view find a really bright star like Sirius we're now in the winter time and it's, it's available and you want to defocus it on both ends loosen your lock knobs in the primary you shouldn't have to mess with the secondary at this point it takes a lot of jostling around to knock it out of alignment but you don't want to try to keep it centered on the star and in live view, probably about five times magnification. And defocus in and out and make minor adjustments until the entire circle is concentric around the, uh, the imprint of the secondary. If you don't have the, uh, the knob style collimation knobs then, um, and you got screws instead, it can be a little bit of a daunting challenge, but it can be done and um, no tool is going to get you as close as reality as, as actually using a star to test your collimation and that's the point I'm trying to make to you and I haven't seen anybody suggest that in videos but you can use all the tools you want inside of a house or wherever and especially if you're traveling a long distance with a telescope it's probably not going to stay collimated and uh, and a star won't lie to you so I hope this was helpful and um, I encourage you to get outside in the field and and do this like I said make your your basic adjustments indoors and then when you're out in the field fine-tune it learn how to do that in the dark and that's uh, the absolute best advice I can give you on collimation so as promised here's your typical Cheshire collimator tool and I'm going to show you why I hate these things. Now, you see that little shim that's in the uh, focuser draw tube? This is a stock focuser, so don't expect much, and it's a budget telescope. And it's shimmed to, to help it be rigid and that sort of thing. But <clears throat> this is a great tool, don't get me wrong. But if you're in uh, 
you have a budget telescope, you've probably got a pretty crum crummy rack and pinion focus or two. Now look at the wobble in this thing. How do you expect to have that centered? Now you can uh, adjust these knobs any kind of way you want to, but um, truth is, you're, you're probably not going to get this centered. That uh, focuser plug trick that I showed you is a whole lot more solid and reliable than, than this is for a cheaper telescope. But um, if you went out and bought one, good luck with it. It's, uh, you might get it fine-tuned to the way you've got this thing positioned, and then you get out in the field and you find out that you're off. So, uh, waste of money in my opinion. It's unnecessary. Uh, a center donut and eyeballing it and then fine tuning in the field is a whole lot more useful than, than owning one of these guys. And I'll tell you something else it'll do for you. It'll, if you're not careful, it'll moor up the inside of your, your focuser tube and scrape up the, uh, the black coating that's on the inside and that's there for a reason. So Here's a really good illustration I found and this will show you a lot about uh, what's going on. You pause the screen or something and, and check that out. There's a lot of these good images available on a, on a Google search. But uh, yeah, some guys talk about laser collimators too. Um, here's a good question for you. Is your laser collimator collimated? Is the laser perfectly aligned? Is it hitting the mirror in the right place? Uh, these are things you, that you need to, uh, to ask yourself. And... Um, like I showed you with your your basic rack and pinion focuser, that's a stock focuser. It's uh, it's not very accurate. Earlier I mentioned that, that you might possibly have the uh, collimation screws rather than knobs on your telescope, and that's common in a lot of the budget telescopes. So if you do check out this website, do a search for Bob's knobs, and their uh, collimation knobs that you can get. To replace your uh, your screw tight, or if uh, you want to try to figure out what kind of springs and that sort of stuff you need, then then go to Lowe's and do it yourself. But um, in any event, it's a really good idea to have have the knobs over the uh, screws, especially if you're going to do it in the field. You don't want to be fumbling around with a screwdriver in the dark. It's uh, it's a real pain. I've done it. And for those of you who don't know. Um, when you see stars and they've got those long sharp lines coming out of them, those are diffraction spikes. And they're caused from the uh, incoming light to the telescope being um, diffracted by the spider veins of the secondary mirror. So you're not going to get that in a refractor. Uh, there's tricks you can use to, to get the same effect, but most people that I talk to uh, in general public seems to to like a star image that way rather than what you get with a, a typical refractor so that's what causes it and um, depending on your alignment your collimation you're going to see uh, noticeable changes in that depending on how many spider veins you have and that sort of thing but just thought I'd throw that in there but anyway like I said uh, do your basic collimation indoors make it short and sweet but uh, get out there in the field and do it off of a star where it counts. And if you, if you go do some research and you look in some books, you'll find that a lot of the, uh, the professionals are doing it that way. And why I haven't seen it suggested on YouTube is uh, it's kind of strange to me. But I wish you guys the best of luck and clear skies.